All right, let's start chapter 15 in 157. So chapter 15 deals with the special senses. So we're gonna start off looking at chemical senses. Now chemical senses are the sense of taste and the sense of smell. So taste is known as gustation and smell is known as olfaction. Now both of these use chemoreceptors. Now chemoreceptors are key, uh, receptors that are sensitive to chemicals that are dissolved in solution. And so when we taste something, it's gonna get dissolved in our saliva. When we smell something, it's gonna get uh, dissolved in our mucus. So let's look at the taste of smell, or uh, the sense of smell, all right? So olfaction detects odor chemicals, which are known as odorants. So this occurs uh, up here. Uh, so this right here uh, is what is known as the olfactory epithelium. So this is a blow up of the olfactory epithelium here. So this is the organ of smell, actually. Uh, so this is found on the roof of the nasal cavity. All right. Uh, and in here, uh, we find olfactory neurons. So olfactory neurons are cells used to sense smells. All right. Uh, these are bipolar neurons. Uh, they are surrounded by supporting cells, uh, which are epithelial cells, so more specifically, pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial cells, uh, which produce mucus. All right. Uh, at the distal end of these, they have um, uh, little cilia on those neurons, and those are the sensitive parts. All right, uh, we have about uh, 10 million smell, uh, cells. Uh, they last uh, for about 60 days and are one of the few neurons in which mitotic divisions occur, so they are replaced. Uh, we have about 500 receptor cell types, uh, and so we can smell about 4,000 cents, probably a little bit more than that. Uh, some of these are pain receptors, so if you get a good whiff of ammonia, that yeah, will send off these pain receptors there. Uh, smell actually aids in food selection. About 80% of our flavor of food uh, comes from smell, so we smell and taste food at the same time. And this is why uh, if you have a rhinitis, a cold, um, you might notice that uh, your foods have a blander taste to them. All right, so let's take a look at the nerve pathway here. So uh, odorants must be in a gaseous state in order for us to taste, uh, smell them. So here, these uh, uh, olfactory neurons move through the cribriform plate uh, in the ethmoid bone, and then they go into the olfactory bulb. And in that bulb, they're gonna synapse with mitral cells, uh, which are shown here in green, and they're gonna send uh, that, um, so those mitral cells, they're gonna refine that signal, uh, they're gonna amplify it and relay it on here. Um, but also in the uh, olfactory bulb are these other cells called granule cells, shown here in black. Now those granule cells are going to release gamma amino butyric acid, so something I mentioned before, it's also known as GABA, and that's going to inhibit the mitral cells. So what happens here is uh, this is where we go undergo sensory adaptation. So sensory adaptation is a decreased sensitivity to a continuous stimulus. So, you know, what happens here, we walk into a room, we smell something like roses or whatever it is, so candle burning. You know, after um, a few seconds there, we're gonna lose about 50% of the intensity of that. So sensory adaptation starts to kick on. After a minute, we're kind of unaffected by that. Unless it's a, a particularly uh, horrible odor, uh, then we don't lose, uh, we don't get sensory adaptation. Basically that signal, because it's unusual, continues to be sent in. Uh, but those uh, granule cells uh, secrete that GABA. So, you know, if you've ever been next to somebody who smells awful and you're like, holy cow, how can they not smell themselves? Well, it's GABA. GABA is the reason they can't smell themselves. All right, so from here, uh, we have two tracks that go into uh, our brain. So the first track goes to their frontal lobe, uh, and it goes to or, uh, our olfactory cortex, and that's where we interpret the smell. The second track goes to our hypothalamus, and then to regions of our temporal lobe, where uh, we have our uh, store memory and emotions. Uh, and so, as I mentioned before, you know, uh, if we smell something, that can also trigger a memory. Also in there, uh, it goes through the reflexes, so we might sneeze or increase salivation. All right, let's move on to taste. All right, so gustation tastes tastants, which are taste chemicals. So here, what we're looking at are taste buds. So these little guys here, if we go to the next picture, there's a blow up of a taste bud. 
So this is a sensory receptor organ for taste, and we have about uh, 10,000 taste buds. Uh, most of these are on our tongue and papilla. Okay, so this is showing our tongue, and this is showing the four different kinds of papilla we have. Uh, filiform is the most common. Uh, there are no taste buds on filiform. Fungiform, which are found scattered throughout the tongue, have taste buds on them. Foliate, uh, which are found on the sides, have taste buds. And valate, or also known as circumvalate, are a row in the back of the tongue. They also have taste buds on them. Okay, uh, so. Um, uh, we also have taste buds uh, on the roof of our mouth, uh, cheeks, and walls of our pharynx. Now, papilla, these are peg-like projections on the tongue. And as I said, not all of them have taste buds on them. All right? And I do want to say all of our taste sensations are uh, tasted by these different uh, taste buds that are found in various ways throughout our tongue. If you've ever seen a diagram of the tongue where they have it in different parts and they say you can taste one of these sensations in one area like sweet in one area uh, salty in another those are just incorrect all right so if we look at taste sensations uh, we have uh, sweet receptors so those mainly taste like sugars and anything that has a similar shape to sugars uh, we have sour receptors which taste acids we have bitter uh, receptors that taste bases salty receptors which taste salts and then another one called umami. And umami uh, is a savory flavor, uh, kind of a beefy taste, meaty taste there. And what we're really tasting there is glutamate that is found in meats, that savory flavor there. Uh, it has an odd name for us because uh, that umami, because it was first discovered and named by the Japanese. All right, let's look at influence on there. So, um, so once again, uh, because of chemoreceptors, these have to be dissolved, uh, these tastins have to be dissolved in a solution in order for us to, uh, to taste them. Uh, taste is 80% smell, or flavors are 80% smell. But there's gonna be other things that are gonna influence this. Thermoreceptors, mechanoreceptors, and nociceptors. So thermoreceptors, you know, whether something is hot or cold, right? So some people like uh, hot coffee, some people like uh, iced coffee, but not a whole lot of people like lukewarm coffee, right? Uh, mechanoreceptors, so that gives us like the texture of the food. So, you know, this can influence on whether we like it or not. So I'm not a big fan of fungus, so I don't like mushrooms, and that's mainly because of the texture of the mushrooms. Uh, lastly, are nociceptors, which are pain receptors. So if you like spicy foods, you're activating those. Now, I will point out that, you know, that, and this is kind of anecdotal, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, I have, a, the older I've gotten, the, the hotter stuff I can taste, uh, can tolerate. Uh, and it's probably because I'm losing sensation on those uh, nociceptors. Uh, so all those thermoreceptors, mechanoreceptors, and nociceptors, they're gonna either enhance or detract from the taste of the food, all right? Uh, and also taste receptors are going to adapt rapidly, you know, during that sensory adaptation. You know, five to three seconds is partial, incomplete in one to five minutes. And that's like, you know, our first taste of a dessert or steak really tastes good. Uh, but later on, it doesn't taste, still tastes good, but not as good as that first taste that we got. Uh, one of the things I, I skipped I accidentally was to talk about uh, the uh, gustatory, gustatory or taste cells themselves. Uh, these are a group of modified epithelial cells that function as receptors for taste. And we have anywhere from 50 to 150 of these taste cells per taste bud, okay? Uh, and they, once again, they are surrounded by supporting cells, uh, which are shown there in like the yellow, all right? Uh, and then uh, at the end, we have these gustatory hairs that project through these pores, and that's a sensitive part to these guys. Uh, and we replace these cells every seven to 10 days. Now, this is one of the odd situations where our, our receptor here is not a nerve cell, but an epithelial cell. All right, let's look at the uh, gustatory pathway. So you can see there's uh, three, different, uh, um, uh, three different cranial nerves involved here. So we have the glossal pharyngeal uh, nerve, uh, we have uh, the facial nerve and the vagus nerve that are involved here. Okay, so uh, you can see those there. All right. All these nerve fibers pass through the solitary nucleus of the medulla oblongata. So you can see that right there. All right. Uh, and here they initiate reflexes. 
Uh, this is for increased salivation uh, secretion or gastric juice secretion, right? Because we're gonna put food there. And then they're gonna go through the thalamus and from the thalamus, they're gonna go to the gustatory cortex and the parietal lobe. And we interpret what that taste is.